Gavin Gear here from Ultimate Reloader. I'm here at Gun Talk teaching a range ready class on reloading. Wanted to take a break to tell you all a little bit about what you're gonna to need to reload rifle ammunition. This is not necessarily any particular order here, but this is kind of the collection of stuff that you're gonna need. So you start with your cases. This is some range pickup brass. You might also use brand new cases. You might use cases that you've fired previously, that you've meticulously kept track of. That's your starting point. The first thing we do is we clean. So we're gonna need some sort of a tumbler or ultrasonic cleaner. If we're using a tumbler, after we tumble the cases in like what we've got here, ground walnut shells, we're gonna to need to remove the ground walnut shells from the cases and that's what you use a separator for. For powder, I've got a manual thrower here. I've got a digital scale. Super important that you're keeping track of your powder charge. You've got the correct charge and then it's being thrown consistently. Now, if you want to get real meticulous, you can also get a trickler. We can throw the bulk charge onto the scale and then go kind of almost granule by granule to get up to the exact weight that you're looking for. Now, before we start loading, we're going to want to make sure we have a good source of load data. You can use a printed manual like this Lyman manual. Hodgdon has great resources online for free with low data. Each manual has kind of its own different angle on the subject. So I would recommend getting a few and that way you can cross check your load data as well. Of course, we can't forget the press. What I have here is the simplest type of press. It's a single stage where we've got one die on the top and one shell holder on the bottom, one thing happening at a time. A different permutation of this kind of a press is called a turret, where essentially the dies have like a lazy Susan type deal, rotating them into place, they snap into place. Works just like a single stage, but we can have multiple dies ready to go. And then finally, if you want to load with quick speed, a progressive press is what you're gonna to wanna to look at. Progressive press, every time you pull the handle, will complete a cartridge. You've got multiple things going on at the same time. The downside is you've got more complexity, and more cost, but you do get more speed. So it's all about what you're after. The dies are what actually do the work. They're gonna size the brass, they're gonna expand the case mouth on the pistol side, and they're gonna seat bullets and do crimping. Different dies have a different price point. They have different positive and negative attributes. So you're gonna to wanna to research which one of those to get. We've got the shell holder. That's gonna hold the case when it's in the press and pull it back down out of the sizer and so on and so forth. Now this is a tool here that is often overlooked by reloaders but is really important. This is called a case gauge. And what we can do is after we've sized our brass, we can drop it in and see if it's gonna chamber in our firearm. This is down below flush, that looks great. We can also take a complete cartridge and drop it in to make sure we didn't deform the case while we were crimping or seating bullets, that kind of, kind of thing. Okay, after we size and deprime, we need to put a new primer in, and that's where a priming tool comes in handy. So this is a hand priming tool. We squeeze the lever, pushes a primer up. We can also prime on press with certain presses. This one does not have that built in. And there are also bench units where we can operate a lever and push the primer into the primer pocket. Now one thing with Rifle ammunition is you have to think about case prep. Case prep is a necessary evil. After we size the case, it can elongate. And in that case, we're gonna need a trimmer. This is a drill operated trimmer here. You can also have a hand lathe, multiple types. The point is you need to make sure your case is at least as short as what's specified in the book, if not just a little bit shorter. And after we trim the case, we're gonna to wanna to chamfer the outside and deburr the inside to make sure that bullets are gonna seat smoothly and that our ammunition feeds reliably, especially with something like a semi-auto rifle. We've got also some other little bits that we can screw onto the end of the tool here. We can ream primer pockets if we have military brass that's swaged. We have primer pocket cleaners, and those on this particular tool are just things that we can screw right onto the end. Okay, components. Obviously we need powder. We're gonna pick the powder based on the cartridge that we're reloading and the bullet weight. Those are factors that are gonna steer us one direction 
or another. Faster powders are used for pistol, medium burn rate powders are used for conventional rifle like these 223s, and magnums use really, really slow powders. Then we've got the bullet itself. This is kind of where I start when I think about reloading. I'm gonna pick a bullet that's gonna have the performance and the economy that I'm looking for. If it's a hunting bullet, it's gonna have the stopping power I'm looking for, and I build my load around that. Primers. Primers can be large or small, pistol or rifle, and standard or match. So there's a few different variables to keep track of there, and unfortunately, a little bit hard to find. <laughs> but with a little bit of due diligence, you'll find your primers. Make sure you stock up if you can on those. The loading block helps us keep track of the cases. We can even charge them with powder right there in the loading block. It helps us to just verify that we're at the correct stage of the process and it holds the cartridge in its various states of being loaded. And then when we're all done, we could either use factory ammunition boxes or a fancier box like this MTM case with the folding lid here. There's a place for a label on the outside where we're gonna to wanna to write the information about the particular load that we've just loaded. Okay, so that is kind of a high level overview of what you're gonna need if you wanna start loading rifle ammunition. There's a lot more fancy gadgets you can add to the equation, but this is kind of the, the minimum set. I hope that helps you get started.